So hey guys, how are you all? Welcome to, so we are back with a brand new movie on what if Naruto and Ashizu can be best friends, movie but before we start, be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's begin the story. Hey Joey, you in there? It's your move. The small group consisting of T Gardner, Tristan Taylor, Joey Wheeler and Yugi Moto were sitting around Yugi's table one day during school, Joey and Yugi playing a small game of duel monsters. Joey grinned and threw down a monster in attack mode. Ah, isn't he cute when he's thinking? Tristan jumped behind Joey. Hey Tristan, Yugi here's teaching me how to play duel monsters. Drooling monsters. Duel monsters you Nimrod. Joey's gotten pretty good, but Yugi's like an expert at the game. T said from the sidelines. Pretty good move, huh Yug? Yep, pretty good, but not as good as, Yugi placed a monster with a higher attack on the field. This. Thanks a lot Yug. That takes all of my life points. Man you suck at this game Joey, Tristan commented, making Joey sulk. Nah, I just got better cards. That's all. Yugi said, grinning sheepishly. You see, my big brother runs a game shop, and I get all my best cards from him. Your own game shop? Joey grinned again, wrapping an arm around Yugi's neck and lifting him from the ground. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go after school. Later that day the group burst through the door of a small game shop in the suburbs of Domino City, not too far away from their school. Hey big brother, you here? Huh, that you Yugi? A man came from the back. He was rather tall, around six feet, with unruly blonde hair framing his face and falling just above his shoulders. He was wearing blue jeans, a black long sleeve shirt and a pair of cowboy boot on his feet. He had three whisker marks on his neck, and a small beard on his chin. What's with the pep squad? These are my friends from school, Joey, Tristan and T. Hi. Hey. Uh. Nice to meet you, sir. Hey. I'm Naruto, Yugi's older brother, if you haven't noticed yet. Hey bro, will you please show us your super special card? Special card? Ah, oh, you mean, well, I don't know, Naruto grinned. Please. Joey clapped his hands in front of his face. Pretty please. All right, all right. Come here. He motioned them to the counter and pulled out a wooden box with a small flame insignia at the front. He opened it to reveal a dark velvet lining and a card with a white dragon on it. Ladies and gentlemen, the strongest dragon card in all of Duel Monsters, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Whoa. Joey, Yugi and T leaned in, looking at the card. Huh, I don't see anything special. Tristan took the card in his hand and twirled it around, making the other three gape. Naruto sweat dropped and grabbed it from the kid's hand. Suddenly the door jingled and a tall 17-year-old kid in a blue uniform walked in with a silver briefcase in his hands. Hey, isn't that Kaiba? Doesn't he have a big fancy company to run? Yeah, what's he doing here? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm here to trade. Wow, you're into duel monsters too. That's great, maybe we should all play together sometime. Joey jumped in front of him, getting shoved back by Kaiba. Please, duel you? I'd have more of a challenge gong against a dueling monkey. Dueling monkey. Now, does this shop have any worthwhile cards or what? He spotted the card in Naruto's hand. What? How does a dump like this have the blue eyes white dragon? He was by the counter in an instant, and reached for the card. Naruto yanked it back away from his hand. Enough with the window shopping. You want something, kid? I want that blue eyes card, and I'll give you all of these. Kaiba slammed the briefcase in his hand on the counter, making the four friends reel back, and opened it, showing some of the rarest card industrial illusions ever produced. Naruto didn't even flinch. Nope, sorry. Fine then. Kaiba slammed the case shut. If you won't trade it, maybe you'll sell it. Name your price. I can pay anything. Anything? Naruto raised an eyebrow. Who the hell do you think you are, Scourge McDuck? Naruto commented making the other four snicker and Kaiba growl. I am Seto Kaiba, president of, yes, yes, I know. Naruto waved the kid off. But the card ain't for sale. You'll regret this decision. Kaiba growled and walked out of the shop. Why didn't you sell the card? Tristan asked bewildered. The card is not for sale. If I wanted to get rich, I could have sold it to a vast number of eccentric billionaires like the little brat that just walked out. But the fact is, this card was given to me by an old friend I met while I was in college. The memories of friends are always more important than money. You would feel that way even if it was any ordinary card, right big bro? Naruto nodded, ruffling Yugi's hair. Precisely. Now, you kids wanted something? Yeah, let's trade, Naruto chuckled at Joey's enthusiasm. Alright, the dual monsters cards are this way. I'll give you the first five for free. Hey, that's great. Later that night, in Kaiba Corp. 
Headquarters, Seto Kaiba spoke to a small man with glasses. I want you to go to the game shop and get me a very special order. As you command Master Kaiba, the man bowed and left. Next morning, just as the school was closing, Naruto was just getting some coffee when three men came by, the two bigger ones armed with clubs. Good morning, Mr. Moto. My master Seto Kaiba has requested you join him for today for some unfinished business. Oh, Naruto raised an eyebrow, scanning the three men, his hand reaching under the counter, and if I should refuse? I am afraid I must insist. The little man's glasses shone with menacingly. Very well then, insist away. Naruto drew a wooden sword from under his counter and pointed it at the three men. The little one grinned and motioned to the other two, who raised their bats and charged at Naruto. Naruto shook his head sadly and sidestepped their blind charge, clipping one man on the back of his head, sending him to the ground. The other one turned and swiped at Naruto's head with his bat, which the blonde man blocked, and then brought his sword down on his arm. The appendage let out a snap, breaking at the impact. Naruto swiped the goon's feet from under him and stopped on his chest, forcing the air out and sending him into unconsciousness from the pain. He turned to the small man who was by now cowering in the corner, just in time to hear a jingle and see his younger brother and his three friends come through the door. Big brother, what's going on here? Yugi asked a little worried, while Joey and Tristan were gawking in awe at the sword in Naruto's hand in his stance. Oh, them? Naruto motioned to the three men, making Yugi nod with a sigh. They came to kindly invite me to Kaiba's palace for tea. Now, Naruto turned to the trembling man. Please tell Mr. Kaiba that unfortunately I am disinclined to acquiesce to his request. He got blank looks from all five currently conscious people in the room. Means, no, the small man nodded and ran out of the shop. Now, someone mind helping me take out the trash? He grabbed the one with the broken arm by the back of his shirt, flinging him over his shoulder, and motioning to the other. Tristan nodded and he and Joey grabbed the man following Naruto out. Just leave them here. They'll run back to Kaiba when they regained consciousness. They deposited the two by the trash cans on the sidewalk. Hmm. Naruto scratched his chin in thought when the three came back in the room. Maybe it's about time someone taught Seto Kaiba a little lesson in manners. But not me. He left the room through the door in the back, coming back five minutes later with a golden box with a strange eye symbol on it. What do you think, Yugi? Care to teach our rich friend a thing or two about the heart of the cards? Yugi nodded confidently. Then here, I have two things for you. Naruto slid the golden box towards Yugi, who opened the lid. Inside was a single dual monster's deck, the top card being the Dark Magician, the most powerful spellcaster monster in the game. That deck is the one Grandpa used when he dueled. Yugi reached for the deck with shaking hands, brushing the top card with his thumb. Grandpa's deck. He wanted you to have it when I thought you were ready. And I think you are. Naruto smiled gently at his younger brother. T grabbed Yugi's hand in hers, squeezing it tightly. Yugi nodded and whipped the tears from his eyes, smiling gratefully at T who smiled back. And also, there's this. Naruto brought out the wooden box with the legendary dragon and took the card out, laying it over the dark magician. But that's your precious card. Yes, and it's too precious to lay in my shop, just collecting dust. The best use for any card is always in the deck of one worth. Yugi smiled at his brother and hugged him. Now take it and teach Kaiba a valuable lesson. Let's go. The five left through the door, Naruto locking behind them. So you came after all. Kaiba smirked at Naruto when they entered his building, here to teach me a lesson? Not me. Naruto grinned, motioning to Yugi. The four friends were currently in a circle. When they emerged Naruto noticed black markings on each of their right hands. I'm ready. Let's duel. Fine, but if I win. You give me your blue eyes. Yugi's millennium puzzle was emitting a yellow glow, which only Naruto noticed, conveniently enough, and Yugi's back straightened a little and his eyes narrowed. All right, Kaiba, you got yourself a deal. His voice was a little deeper, too, but nothing too noticeable. Naruto grinned at his brother's determination. Yugi and Kaiba climbed to the top of the strange big machine and laid their decks on the designated areas while Naruto and the three kids sat in the stands. Let's duel. The life point counters spun to 200 and they both drew 5 cards. I'll start things off with the might Hitotsumi giant. A part of the machine glowed and a large, one-eyed, green monster appeared on the field, floating in the air. What? You brought the monsters on the cards to life. Yugi frowned and drew a card. Fine then, I summon winged dragon, guardian of the fortress no number 1. Now my dragon, attack. The blue dragon shot a fireball at Kaiba, bringing his life points down by 200. Not a bad move Yugi. For an amateur. Kaiba grinned. 
But now I summon Saggy the Dark Clown in attack mode. A very strange looking clown appeared on the field, cackling maniacally. Why summon Saggy? He's too weak, Yugi mumbled in wonder. You're right. For now, but once I add the negative energy generator to him, his attack points will double in strength. Now my clown, attack. The dark clown sent a dark blob of energy at Yugi's monster, disintegrating it. Yugi frowned, drawing a new card. This monster's useless. Then I guess all I can do is this. He put a monster in defense mode. Kaiba grinned, drawing a new card and obliterating Yugi's defense monster. Now it's my turn, and I Gaia the fierce knight in attack mode. Now my knight, attack. The mounted monster charged at the clown, one of its lances striking it dead on, destroying it. Kaiba drew another card and grinned, before he started cackling. A valiant effort Yugi, but now you lose. I summon the blue eyes white dragon. Attack. White lightning. A very convincing hologram of the legendary dragon monster fired a lightning ball from its mouth, obliterating the knight and lowering Yugi's life pints to 900. Yugi growled, the cheers from his three friends sounding distant in his ears. Naruto, on the other hand, just watched the duel with a raised eyebrow and a small grin on his face. What can I do? No monster in my deck is strong enough to destroy his dragon. He laid down a monster in defense mode which quickly got destroyed by Kaiba's dragon. Tell me Yugi, if you can't defeat one dragon, what hope do you have against two? Kaiba smirked and summoned another blue eyes white dragon to the field, making Yugi cringe a little. How can I win this? Yugi wondered, you know, for someone calming to have faith, you're giving up pretty easily kid. A translucent figure of Naruto appeared by him. Big brother. Yeah, well, something like that. Anyway, back to you giving up. How can I defeat one of the strongest monsters in the game with what I have in my deck? Trust in your deck, Yugi, and allow the cards to fall perfectly into place, just like a puzzle. Naruto's figure disappeared. A puzzle? Think, when are the cards like a puzzle? Wait, I think I remember Big Bro telling me about something like that. Flashback Naruto and a 13 year old Yugi were standing in Naruto's shop, Yugi just coming back from school. Remember this, kid. Dual Monsters has only one completely unstoppable monster. The Forbidden One. The monster separated into five different pieces. It's so rare that most duelists don't even have a single piece. Naruto grinned at Yugi's starry eyed look. Flashback end, that's it. The Forbidden One. Yugi looked at his hand. Three pieces. Still not enough. He drew a new card. This isn't it, but it'll be useful all the same. I play the magic card Swords of Revealing Light. Now all of your monsters will be unable to attack for three whole turns. So you stopped my two dragons from attacking for three turns. My new monster isn't restricted by your little magic card. Behold the awesome power of Judge Man. A monster with two maces in its hand appeared on the field and attacked Yugi's face down cad, destroying it. The Dark Magician. But he won't stand a chance once Kaiba's dragons are free to attack. Yugi attacked the Judge Man with his favorite monster, lowering Kaiba's life points by another 300. A sacrifice that doesn't even phase me, and even though two of my dragons are frozen, the third one will not be. Yet another white dragon appeared, shocking Yugi, Joey, T and Tristan, but not so much Naruto. So you had all three all along, you only wanted my brother's card so it couldn't be used against you. Precisely. Now my dragon, attack his dark magician. White lightning. The dragon destroyed the purple garbed spellcaster, making Yugi frown. Do you understand now, Yugi? You can't hope to stand against the combined power of all three of my blue eyes white dragons. And on the next turn they'll be free to attack you. And no card in your pathetic deck is strong enough to stop them. My deck is not pathetic. It was masterfully made by my late grandfather and given to me by my brother. It has the heart of three members of the Moto family, and it will not lose against yours. Please, your grandfather was pathetic and your brother is weak, and your deck is worse than the both of them. So draw your final card and face your demise. Yugi looked at the deck with a worried look on his face. Only one card remaining. The odds are against me. Suddenly the room darkened and the deck seemed to move out of his reach. The deck, it senses my doubt. Focus Yugi. A stronger voce called in his mind, don't lose focus. Trust in your deck little brother. Trust in the heart of the cards. Yes, the heart of the cards. Yugi noticed the hands hovering over his deck, marked with black lines, belonging to his friends. The friendship mark. Come on Yug, you can do it Paul. Come on Yugi, we're with you buddy, the friendship mark. Come on Yug, you can do it Paul. Come on Yugi, we're with you buddy. Yugi nodded and reached for the top card of his deck. So Yugi, 
Will you play your last pitiful card? My deck has no pitiful cards, but it does contain the unstoppable Exodia. What? Kaiba yelled. I have assembled all five pieces of the Forbidden One, and the unstoppable monster is now free. A green seal appeared inside a dark portal, and a golden brown large, terrifying monster stepped out of the shadows. And you, Kaiba, are finished. Exodia, obliterate. The monster shot two golden beams from its arms, completely destroying all three of the blue eyes white dragons and bringing Kaiba's life points to zero. How? How could I lose? You lost because you only depended on the power of your deck, without faith, you can never be victorious. That's impossible. Now Kaiba, it's time to rid you of the darkness. Open your mind. Mind crush. Naruto raised an eyebrow and Kaiba fell to his knees, ignoring the calls of his younger brother who came at the exact moment to witness Sido's defeat. Naruto chuckled and walked to his little brother's form, which was being hugged by T and congratulated by Tristan and Joey. Nice work, kid. You thought Kaiba a very important lesson, now all four of you, remember this. Have faith in your deck, and in yourself, and you will never lose. Not only in this particular game, but in life as well. The four kids all nodded at his words. Hmm, maybe I should take to the road again. Naruto muttered to himself, surprising the others who heard him. But, but big brother, what do you mean? I have a few things that need to be taken care of, and this duel convinced me that the best time is now. He put a small bundle of keys in Yugi's hand. Here, the keys to the house and shop. I can count on the four of you to take care of them? The four nodded. You can open the store when you get back from school. I've already packed. He kneeled and hugged Yugi. My plane's leaving in an hour, I have to go. Good luck kid, I'll see you around. Naruto turned around and walked away, picking up a bag that stood close by and waving with the other arm, not turning around. Sad to see him leave, T asked Yugi when his big brother was out of sight. Yeah. Yugi nodded but he always did like to travel, and he will be back soon enough, I'm not a kid anymore, I can take care of myself, and the shop. And you have you to help us pal. Joey grinned and yanked him up, Tristan giving him a thumbs up and a tea smiling at him. He, yeah. Yugi smiled and the four walked home for the day. So, I'm dying to know, why are you here? My valentine tucked a blonde lock of hair behind her ear as she watched Yugi and Joey on the other side of the night's campfire while the two other members of the group were finishing up their meals, and scanning the others. My sister. Joey mumbled, clenching his fists. I need the money to pay for my sister's operation. Mai's eyes softened almost unnoticeably as she watched the young blonde. That's so sweet, she thought with a small sigh. And you Yugi? My brother, Yugi and the others frowned. Cue obligatory flashback it was a few days after Naruto left, and Yugi was just opening the shop after school. Joey was there as well having volunteered to help for the day. Hey, Yug, look at this. Joey motioned to a small package that waited for them at the front door of the shop. Huh, who could it be from? Yugi turned it around in his hands, Industrial Illusions? Isn't that the company that makes the game? Yeah, could they have heard about my match with Kaiba? It wasn't an official match or anything, but... Well come on, let's check it out inside. They went inside the house and opened the package, and it was a VHS tape labeled, Watch Me. Yugi shrugged and turned the TV on. Hello Yugi boy. The head and neck of Maximilian J. Pegasus appeared on the screen, grinning at the two boys, and Joey, my my. What the? That's Pegasus. Who, Maximilian Pegasus, at your disposal? The white-haired man made a small bow, still grinning. How are you doing that? Joey asked the tape making Yugi sweat drop a little. Why, magic, of course. What do you want, Pegasus? Oh my such bad manners, and to the bringer of news of your brother. My brother? Why yes, he's currently, indisposed. But he does wish you well. The tape switched to a dark cell with a tall man with blonde hair and blue eyes inside. Brother, what do you want with him? Nothing much, just insurance. Insurance? Yes, insurance that you will enter my tournament. You'll have to, if you want to see your brother again, that is. Pegasus you creep. Let Yug's brother go. Joey yelled into the screen making Pegasus chuckle. Now now. He waved his finger left to right. You'll have to come and get him. The instructions are in the box. Ta ta. The screen went blank as Joey yelled at it and Yugi just stared. Flashback end. Wow. Pegasus kidnapped him? Mai was almost speechless. Yeah. Yugi nodded sadly as T squeezed his hand gently. Hey, why are ya so nice, anyway? Joey looked at Mai suspiciously. Relax Joseph, I just want to know what makes you two go on, that's all, good night, she left the clearing. 
Later that night, after a very strange encounter with another schoolmate, Bakura, the five friends heard a shriek of fright to the south. That sounded like Mai. Let's go, I, I lost. Mai fell down to her knees as the gigantic figure of her opponent stood above her, grinning maliciously. Yes my dear, now hand over all your star chips. Mai, what's going on? Get out of here guys, or he'll do the same to you as he did to me. She yelled at the five that burst into the clearing by the hollow machine. Are you okay, Mai? Joey tried to approach his fellow blonde but stopped when the huge figure behind her grabbed her wrist, showing her gauntlet to the others. Look here, he laughed as the five friends gasped. Her star chips, he's an eliminator, Mai gasped out. Yes, I was hired by Pegasus to eliminate weakling duelists like her. He tugged her hand a little harder making her gasp. And now I will. He was stopped when a hand squeezed his shoulder tightly and threw him away from Mai and into a nearby tree. Hey guys. Naruto smirked at their bewildered looks, it wasn't long before he was impacted by a tri-haired missile. Bro, hey, kid, I see you missed me, but Pegasus said he kidnapped you, Yugi muttered as Naruto laughed. Come on kid, you have got to give me more credit than that, Naruto chuckled, Pegasus is a wimp. Grr, who dares, I dare, Naruto smirked as he turned to the downed eliminator. The other noticed his slightly changed wardrobe. He had on an old army coat, tan shirt, brown pants, cowboy boots and a small bag on his hip. Who are you? Panic got up, glaring at Naruto. Naruto Moto. Naruto gave a small bow, getting another growl from the eliminator. And I will duel you for miss. Valentine's chips. Mai stared at him while Yugi and Joey grinned. Fool, and what makes you think I will duel you? You're not in this tournament. Because I have something you may like. Naruto took one card from his pack and showed it to Panic. Is that, that's right. Dark Necrofear, one of the rarest fiends in the game. Naruto grinned at the look in Panic's eyes, so? Alright, you got a duel. Panic grinned and the two stood on the platforms as they rose up, but you should know, Naruto, that when dueling Panic, there's more on the line than just your card. The Eliminator pressed a button and cuffs came from the metallic walls, clasping around Naruto's legs. Naruto just smirked but did nothing. Is that all? Naruto's smirk never faded, let's start. Is that the brother you were talking about, Yugi? Mai asked the smaller kid. Yeah. Pegasus told me he kidnapped him, Yugi shook his head with a small grin on his face. I should have known better. Yeah, your bro's badass. Joey yelled as the other chuckled. Mai looked at Yugi and Joey, then at Yugi's brother and smiled, choosing to believe in someone else, for the first time in a long while. But before we start, Naruto, let me give you a little taste of what's to come. Panic hit a button and two jets of flame shot towards Naruto, who didn't even flinch. This is all you can do, Panic. Cheap pyrotechnics will not make it easier for you in this duel. Let's start. Oh is that all? Cowering behind a shield? How typical. You dare call me a coward? I will destroy you, Panic snapped and raised the level on his controls and pushed the button, firing two bolts of fire directly at Naruto, who calmly dodged them. But it doesn't matter, after my next move your little spell card will dissolve and all my monsters will be free to attack. You will lose, Naruto. Panic started laughing at Naruto, who just raised an eyebrow. Maybe, but it's my move now. Now I'll play the spell card polymerization, to fuse my two monsters into a new entity. An energy spiral appeared on the field and enveloped the two monsters. When they emerged, the Viking was now riding the wolf, a longer sword in his hands. The Viking wolf swordsman. And I'll play another magic card, Mjolnir, which raises my monster's attack by another 500 points. Now my monster, attack. Fool, even with your monster's new weapon, it's still too weak to attack my monster's head on. Yes, if I was attacking your monsters, but my target is your castle. Viking Wolf Swordsman, Hammer Whirl Throw. The Viking threw the hammer at the castle, raising a lot of smoke. When it cleared, the Viking was on the ground, his longsword in his hands, and the castle was missing its ring. Naruto 2000 Monsters, Viking Wolf Swordsman, ATK 2900, DEF 2100. Spells. Swords of Revealing Light Panic 2000 Monsters, Castle of Dark Illusions, ATK 2509, DEF 1196, 2 Unknown. Spells. N. A. Now it's my turn, and the effect of your swords wears off. The swords disappeared. Yes, it does. But then, how is it that a castle that's lost its flotation ring is still in the air? What? The castle started falling down slowly, held by the chaos shield. Escape, my monsters, now. The monsters struggled against the bright wall, but were unsuccessful. They can't. They're held back by your little shield. 
The castle fell down, kicking up dust, and now you lose, panic. Naruto 2000 Monsters. Viking Longswordman, ATK 1800, Def 1500, Wolves of Fenris, ATK 2100, Def 1500. Spells. Swords of Revealing Light, One Face Down Panic Zero. Monsters. N, A Spells. N, A. What? Impossible, Panic growled, How did you defeat me? You are a coward and a bully, Panic, and you've lost. Grr, I'll show you who's a bully. Panic smashed the controls with his fist, kicking the machine into overdrive. A wall of flame blocked Naruto from his panicking friends. Brother. Yugi's puzzle glowed and a golden shield appeared around the five, blocking the fire. Man, Yug, your puzzle sure is something, it shielded us from the flame. Back in the flaming field, Naruto just stared at Panic with a frown on his face. Pathetic, Eliminator. A light blue glow surrounded him, and what now? I am unharmed. But you will not be. Rune spell crush. Naruto extended his hand and pointed it at his opponent. A small, light blue beam hit the man and he fell down. When the flames subsided Naruto just jerked his leg and broke the cuffs, freeing himself, and jumped from the arena. He picked up eight chips and walked to the others. Miss. Valentine. Naruto extended his hand, offering the starts to her. Why? Mai just stared at the stars in his hand, hum. Why did you do this for me? You don't even know me. No but I do know that you're little Yugi's friend. That's enough. Naruto grinned at her and placed the stars in her hands. Thank you. I owe you. No, you don't. But if it'll set your mind at ease, it'll be Yugi you owe. Mai nodded and left, shooting a thankful look at Yugi and Joey, who were both smiling. Come on, kids, let's set up camp. Naruto turned around. All right, this looks like a nice spot. Naruto mused when the six of them came upon a nice clearing, not too far from a small river. All right now, you two go get us some firewood and water. He pointed to Tristan and Joey who nodded and took off. They came back a few minutes later, Joey carrying a bundle of wood in his arms and Tristan the canteens of water. After five more minutes the fire was started, and the six sat around it. All right, what food do you guys have? Um, food? Yugi, Joey, Tristan and T looked at each other, scratching the backs of their heads in unison. You did bring food, didn't you? Naruto gave them a pointed look. He just face palmed at the shakes he got in return. So, let me get this straight. You went, willingly, to an island far from the mainland, without packing any food? Please tell me you didn't think there'd be burger stands here. He groaned at their sheepish looks, while Mai just giggled. Ms. Valentine, please tell me you have some food, at least. She nodded and gave him her backpack. He sorted the food on the ground and took what he had in his own pack and laid it with the rest. Which one of you kids can cook? The others looked at each other before Joey's hand shot up. You can? Mai asked bewildered. Joey just shrugged. My dad wasn't around much, so I had to cook for myself. Naruto nodded and motioned to the food and the fire. Get started then, kid. So, big brother, where were you for the last two months? Yugi asked Naruto when they got their meals. I was in Egypt, actually. Yugi clenched his puzzle with one hand. Ever since you completed the puzzle I've been wondering about some things. Did you find out anything? Joey asked him. A lot but nothing really sensational. Hmm, from what I could gather, there are seven of these so-called, millennium items, and each one has the power to control an aspect of real magic. Naruto motioned to the pyramid around Yugi's neck while the others just looked at him in wonder. Theoretically, and with a lot of practice, you could cast spells or something like that, not just the passive ones. Everybody remembered the golden shine that surrounded them when Naruto dueled panic. Wow, that's a lot to take in. Naruto nodded. That's all I could find in what little time I had, but an old friend of mine agreed to forward anything he finds to me. But now on to other things. Naruto sent a very evil look at Yugi, making him shiver involuntarily. I hear tell you lost the Exodia pieces. But, you see, what happened was, Yugi started stuttering out an excuse, making everybody else chuckle at him. You gave the cards to a certain Weevil Underwood, who then threw them overboard and into the water, correct? Yugi just nodded, bracing himself for impact. Not a moment sooner Naruto brought his fist down on his head, sending him to the ground in a heap. Damn it, what did I tell you about being gullible? He yelled at the down duelist, while everybody just stared at the scene in front of them with developing sweat drops. But bro, no buts kid, when we get home it's gullibility training for you, Yugi cringed at that. Come on, bro, there's no need for, shut it brat. Just wait until we get home. Yugi nodded and sighed, looking a bit down. Damn it. Naruto sighed and gave three cards to Yugi. Here, the pieces that were lost. 
Yugi beamed at his brother, who ruffled his hair. Oh, I also have a gift for your little duel monster student. He threw five cards at Joey, who looked them over. They should help in this tournament. Thanks a lot man. Hey, guys, what's up? A voice called from the side. Bakura, one of Yugi's friends from school, appeared from the tree line. Naruto raised his eyebrow at him. Bakura, what are you doing here? Yugi asked him. Oh, the same as you blokes, I guess. The white-haired boy shrugged. Naruto's other eyebrow joined the first. And you were in those bushes because, he just shrugged again, making Naruto sigh, okay, whatever. An hour later, the gang was still sitting around the campfire, talking amongst each other. So Joey, what's with you? You've been staring at that card for a while now? Mai asked him. Okay, I'll tell ya, just don't laugh. Sometimes, when I duel, I like to imagine that it's me out there. Trading blows with whatever card my opponent has out. Pretty silly, huh? He scratched the back of his head, laughing, making my giggle. Well, I don't know, I think everybody has a card they can relate to. Well, if you could do that, which one would you choose? Bakura asked him. Hey, that's easy, the flame swordsman. He showed the card to everybody else. You boys and your cards are hilarious, T muttered, getting a laugh from Mai and Naruto. I bet I know which monster you're choosing, kid. Naruto smirked at his younger brother. Yeah, like that took a lot of effort. Yugi took out his favorite card and showed it to the others. Dark magician for the win, baby. Naruto shook his head, chuckling. T. Well, the magician of faith, I guess. Yeah, well my swordsman can beat anything. Not mine, guys. The cyber commander. And you my? Joey asked her. She looked at him for a few moments, before shrugging. All right, I'll play along, harpy lady. She allowed a little grin. And mine is this one. Bakura took out a magic card from his deck and showed it to everyone. It had a picture of a woman with two differently colored sides on her. Isn't that the change of heart card? Bakura nodded. I've never heard of that card. What does it do? Joey asked Bakura who shrugged. Well, if you really want to know, why don't we have a little duel? Not for starships, just for fun. But before that, I think we're forgetting someone. They all turned to Naruto. Oh, is it my turn? He grinned sheepishly, rubbing the back of his head. Okay. I guess I can humor you kids. Here. The card Naruto chose had a picture of an old man dressed in gray robes, with a gray tall hat with a strange looking F on it, and two birds on his shoulder. From underneath the hat shone a single eye. That's a very strange card. It has no attack or defense points. Bakura said. And true to his words, the monster in Naruto's hand was level 1, with zero attack and defense points. Well, it's a very special card, and very dear to me. It's called the Wanderer. Perhaps I should show you how it works, Naruto grinned. My sentiments exactly. Now how about that duel? Why don't each of you put your favorite cards in Yugi's deck? That way, you'll all duel with him. Everybody nodded, and soon Yugi had five extra cards in his deck. Let's get going, but I have to warn you, with this all-star team of monsters we can't lose. Don't worry, I'm sure I'll be fine, but before we start, let me show you something. He put his hands in front of his chest and started humming. Um. What is he doing? Mai asked the others with a sweat drop. I have no idea. Gee, thanks Joey, you're welcome. Hey, look. T pointed at Bakura, who was now wearing an evil smirk and a stylish gold ring around his neck. Crap. Naruto muttered before they all fell asleep. Well, that was surprisingly easy. Bakura muttered, reaching for Yugi's puzzle. And now, the item I've been searching for. The puzzle suddenly shone a bright gold and Yugi woke up. Who are you? What have you done to my friends? He glared at Bakura, making him chuckle. I am a thief and a stealer of souls, and I want your puzzle. If you want it, you'll have to duel me for it. He grinned, lifting his deck, but if I win, you will release my friends. Agreed. Now get ready Yugi, you've never dueled like this before. Shadows surrounded the two as they drew their first hands. I'll start things off. The Cyber Commander. That's Tristan's favorite card. I play the Cyber Commander, attack mode. A figure of the monster appeared on the card. Huh, what the hell? Tristan looked at himself. What am I wearing? Hey, Yugi, do you? He turned around and gasped. Yugi, you're a giant. Oh my, it seems your friend's soul has been locked away inside his favorite card. Did that happen to the others? Hm? Bakura grinned. And although he does look formidable, he mocked the still panicking Tristan. How will he fare against this? A gentleman in a white suit and top hat appeared and attacked Tristan sending the card to the graveyard. Tristan, what have you done with him? 
Yugi growled at Bakura. Why, he was sent to the discard pile. Or, the graveyard, as we call it in Duel Monsters. Yugi growled as he drew a new card. I'd refrain from using my friends, but to save them, I have to win. He looked his hand over. And there's only one card in my hand that can defeat his magical hat. The Flame Swordsman, in attack mode. Joey looked around in bewilderment, before he noticed a very big sword in his arms. What the? Hey Yug, do you know? Ah, oh, you're a giant. Yugi couldn't help but sweat drop. That's it, I finally cracked. Joey, focus. I need you to attack. Joey looked to the other side of the field. What's Bakura doing here? Oh man, I'm, like, six inches tall, wearing a dress, about to fight my giant friend? That's not really Bakura, Joey. That's an evil spirit inside his ring that took him over. Oh, yeah, that's much better, Joey muttered sarcastically. Are you okay? Yugi asked, concerned. Well, I figure I lost my mind, but I'm gonna go with it. Now I need you to attack. You got it, Yug. Say goodbye to the cat in the cat. Joey charge, slicing his opponent in two. Yeah, who's awesome? Bakura grinned and laid another card. Hum, why'd he lay that face down? Cause he's afraid of what Joey the swordsman will do to him. Joey wait, I'm going for it. Hassan shop, hey, what adult? Joey dissected a strange looking thing with a grinning face. A morphing jar. Did I screw up? When attacked, the morphing jar forces both players to discard their hands and draw again. Damn. I'm sorry Yug. It's okay. I'm just glad I didn't have any of our friends' cards in my hand. Yugi drew a new hand and stared at one of the cards. The Dark Magician? That's my favorite card. But is it also my soul card? Only one way to find out, I guess. I summoned the Dark Magician. A little Yugi in purple robes appeared on the field. Yug. What are you doing here? Joey looked at the little Yugi, then at the bigger one, then at the little one again. I have no idea. One minute I was up there, and then. My my. Is little Yugi confused? Bakura grinned and put a card face down. Then he threw a magic card. Just desserts. His grin widened as an ethereal hand grabbed the bigger Yugi's face and his life point dropped by a thousand points. Gah. Yugi clutched his chest. Big Yugi, are you okay? I'll be fine. He grunted. Glaring at the grinning Bakura, he drew another card. I play the magic card double summon. This allows me to summon two monsters this turn. And I summon the Harpy Lady followed by the wanderer. Mai looked herself over as she was hovering just above the ground, wearing a very skimpy suit of armor, making Joey blush. What the hell happened? Magic. Naruto, standing next to her, offered. Hei was wearing the same gray robe that was on the card. He was also missing an eye. The others turned to him. Magic. Yes. Your friend Bakura seems to be possessed by an evil spirit, probably coming from the ring around his neck. And I'm guessing. Naruto trailed off as he turned to the other Yugi. Well, it's still your play kid, what do you do next? We'll have to attack. That's a call for Joey the swordsman. Cool it skirt boy. Mai interrupted his charge as she took off. I was just summoned, so it's my turn. She slashed the face down card that turned over. Not another morphing jar. Sorry guys. Mai muttered to herself as Yugi was forced to discard his hand. Don't worry about it. I did the same thing. Somehow, that doesn't make me feel better sword boy. Ouch. We were just lucky that I didn't have T's soul card in my hand. With a whole new hand, comes a whole new perspective. Bakura grinned as he put down another card, unnerving most of the human turned monsters. The game, ever changing, ever shifting. This guy's freaking me out. Relax. Trust in Yugi. First I play a face down card. A light shone beneath the card, and it lifted up, showing T in a blue dress. Hey guys. Joey and Yugi hurried to hide her from Bakura, while Naruto and Mai just sweat dropped. It's a little early for Halloween, isn't it? She then saw the big Yugi. Whoa, who's that? Yeah, well, we're turned into monsters, and that guy's kinda me, but he's kinda also not me. What? Look at it this way. We have two Yugis, the cool one up there, and the wimpy one over here. Wimpy. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. You forget that here I have the powers of the Dark Magician. I'll show you who's wimpy. He held out his palm towards the card. Yugi don't. Dark magic attack. The attack shattered some lizard-like thing. Yugi, however, fell to his knees, paralyzed with lightning. Foolish boy. You cannot attack the electric lizard without some form of counter. Yugi. His friends gathered around him while Naruto just face palmed. Are you okay, Yugi? Yeah, I'm fine. The big Yugi frowned, but threw down another magic card. 
I play Monster Reborn. In a flash of light Tristan appeared, covering and holding his hands in front of him. Whoa. So this isn't a dream? No, I don't think so. Joey answered him, before he and the now recovered Yugi jumped up and hid T again. Don't bother you fools, I can see her. Bakura threw down yet another face down card. This little monster is very dangerous. Beware the man eater bug. He chuckled to himself. The what now? Tristan asked bewildered. Man eater bug is a monster that automatically destroys one monster on the opponent's side of the field. Yugi answered. We're in a lot of trouble now, what do we do? I'll take care of it, Naruto said, stepping in front of the others. Hey, you up top, how much life point do we have? 1000. The big Yugi answered. That's enough. Naruto grinned. The card flipped over and a massive green bug charged at Naruto, who just stood his ground calmly. Before it could reach him, he brought the top of his staff hard on its head. The bug dissolved into pieces. Yugi's life point dropped by 450, but Naruto was still standing there. Explain yourself mortal. Bakura sneered at the still grinning blonde. I don't have to explain myself to you. He turned to the others. But I guess I can tell you guys what's happened. The Wanderer is a special card. It has no attack or defense points, but it is also immune to magic, trap and monster effects. I summon the Lady of Faith. Bakura growled out, and I also play Change of Heart. Hey, that's Bakura's favorite card. Indeed Yugi, and a magical card it is. With it, I will be able to make you destroy the very friends you sought to protect. I refuse. You cannot. The real Bakura appeared in a strange dress before he went inside the evil one's own monster. Quickly. I have taken over his monster, but you must attack. But I'll destroy you. Maybe not. The big Yugi said. A golden glow enveloped his puzzle and the two Bakuras seemingly exchanged places. If your millennium item can remove the souls from their bodies, then maybe mine can bring them back. Now Yugi. Right. Dark magic attack. Naruto stood up, staring at the full moon, the night after he had reunited with his little brother and his friends. He couldn't help but feel something was wrong with this whole island, and especially its owner. But the stars, usually so talkative during these moonlit nights, were strangely silent. But something else was not. The young blonde best friend of his brother, Joey Wheeler, was tossing and turning in his spot by the stump. Naruto sighed as his brotherly instincts, honed by years of being Yugi's big brother, activated, and he went to wake the boy. Hey, kid, wake up. Shaking him a few times didn't work, so Naruto had to resort to drastic measures. Hey, Mr. Moto. What's up, and why does my arm hurt? That doesn't matter. You had a nightmare. Joey looked away, nodding slowly. What was it? A giant Kaiba sent his dragon to chase me while I was dressed as a dog. Naruto, along with Mai, who was also awake, sweat dropped. You have some issues, kid. They had met the millionaire teenager the other day, when he had landed on his helicopter on the island in search of his little brother. I don't want to be a furry. Joey cried. Yes, well, that's good to hear. Now listen. Forget Kaiba. He's just a spoiled brat, and you don't need his respect to define you. The only people whose opinions you should care about are right there. He motioned to the sleeping teenagers. T, Tristan, Yugi and Mai. They're your friends. They will never abandon you, no matter who you lose to. At her place by the now out fire Mai smiled, getting up and walking to the other two blondes. He's right, you know, and that would be my cue to leave. Naruto chuckled, walking away. Mai, honestly Joseph. What would your sister think if she saw you moping around like that? Yay, I guess you're right, and stop calling me that. Joey glared at her. She wouldn't want you to allow something as little as Kaiba to keep you down, she continued on, ignoring him. Didn't you tell me it was her you were fighting for? All right, I get the picture. Now go back to sleep. She smirked and walked away, intending to do just that, and my. Yes, thanks. You're a real friend. I'm glad you decided we were worth your time. Thank you, Joey. Hey. You said my name right. Go to sleep, skirt boy. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X The next day found them walking towards Castle Pegasus, searching for more duelists so Joey and Yugi could collect their 10 star chips which would allow them access to the finals. They needed a total of five more to proceed. Mai had said her goodbyes that morning, intending to go out on her own, despite Joey's rather vocal protests. Finally, after a few minutes of explaining, having too much on her mind, and needing some privacy with her thoughts he relented, but not before making her promise to come back. 
Naruto and Yugi sighed at Joey's total obliviousness in unison, exchanging a glance. Nai! Joey yelled out suddenly, surprising his friends. What had wrong Joey? Somebody's stalking us. What? I don't see anybody. Tristan turned around, scanning the trees. There there, I just know it. Joey started running off in a random direction. Where are you going? To stalk them. Never a dull moment with you kids. Naruto mused, walking after the four panicked teens. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Joey, how are you holding up? Not too good Yug, I think they have me cornered here, I just might lose this thing. Well, if you need some extra motivation. The short, spiky-haired teen threw the yellow wallet at his best friend. The wallet opened up, showing Joey the smiling face of his little sister. Serenity, remember who you're fighting for, Joey. Yeah, you're right. I can't lose. Sid, Zigor. The older man, up until now sitting quietly in the rafters, spoke up. Deal with the menaces. Yes boss. Two fists shot out at Yugi, but were intercepted by his older brother's own. Naruto gripped the two hands tightly, yanking them down and into the dirt. The two thugs groaned in pain, opting to stay there when Naruto's foot convinced them. Bandit Keith. Naruto Moto. Glad you still recognize me, haven't seen you since the national championship, a couple of years ago. When you beat me. Keith gritted his teeth in anger. The second man to ever do that, and after I get my revenge on Pegasus, you're next, you hear me. My, I'm quaking in my custom leather boots, they're very comfortable, he shrugged in response to the questioning looks he got. But I'd hate to break it to you, Keith. Pegasus has such an advantage that you could never defeat, and I'm just a lot better than you. You little bastard. Keith jumped down, running towards Naruto. The other blonde just jumped to the front, twisting around the angry American, before kicking him in the back, sending him tumbling towards his two minions. He landed on them with a groan. This looks familiar. He sent his piercing gaze towards Joey's opponent. The short man quivered in fear, his shaking hand above his deck. Do you want to continue, Joey, or do you just want to win? Why win when I can have a lot more fun fighting? The blonde teen grinned, earning a proud grin from the older one. And I think I just drew the card that'll allow me to do that. I activate my shield and sword card. What? What does that do? It switches the attack and defense points of all monsters. The three zombies on his opponent's side, as well as his own battle warrior, switched offense and defense. And since those zombies of yours don't have any defense points. Joey grinned. Say sayonara, punk. The metallic blue warrior punched the zombies in the face, causing them to crumble to dust and Joey to win the entire duel. Saw, Bonds muttered, slinking down in his stand, yeah, I win. Great job Joey. Great comeback man, go Joey. Nicely done kid. Naruto chuckled as the four friends, and Bakura, were hugging and dancing around in victory. Now where did Keith go? The band was trotting through the dark, dank tunnel behind Bakura, who was holding his millennium ring in front of him like a compass. They were following the glow of the middle spike. From what Yugi and I can tell my ring acts as a sort of beacon for the other millennium items, he told them. Not, beacon, exactly. Naruto thumbed through a book he got from his shoulder bag as he walked at the back of the line with one hand, the other pointing a small flashlight at it. More like a locator. The other items are the beacons. And if I've been following events correctly, there should be only one other on this island. Is that all that Freaky Ring can do? Tristan asked the oldest member of the group. No idea. Naruto shrugged. The ring is the item with the least amount of information collected in the sources, followed only by the key. I think it's time you tell us the story about these things, Joey said. Are you sure? The teens all nodded. All right. Just keep in mind that the story is nowhere near complete. We still haven't managed to piece everything together. Some of the records are either lost, destroyed or stolen so it's very possible we never do. But here goes, just hold your questions until the end please. They all nodded again. Thousands of years ago in ancient Egypt, the lower kingdom if I remember correctly, pharaohs played a game of dark and terrible power. The called upon a realm outside of this one called, the Shadow Realm, to summon forth manifestations of monsters that resided there, and use these monsters to do battle. At one point in time, something happened. We're not sure exactly what, written records are very scarce, but there was some trouble, either a war or an uprising, and it ended with the millennium items being created. There were seven of them in total, ring, eye, scales, key, rod, necklace and puzzle. Each one carried by a different member of the pharaoh's court, and the puzzle was given to the ruling pharaoh's son. A couple of years after that, when the aforementioned son was grown, another dark time swept the land. The new pharaoh was forced to seal the shadow realm and all the monsters in it, sacrificing his life to do it. That's about it, flash forward about 5000 years or so to Pegasus on the dig of his life. Yugi looked to his left, where the image of his inner companion was floating, looking off into the distance with a pensive stare. Is something wrong spirit? He asked. No, it's just, the story your brother told us is ringing a lot of bells, but I can't recall anything, not even why it's so familiar. We'll figure it out, together. Yes, we will. Thank you Yugi. The spirit disappeared back into the puzzle. 
So what do the other items do? The multicolored teen asked his brother. The only ones I have a clear account on are the puzzle, the key and the necklace. The puzzle holds your spirit friend. The key gives its user the ability to enter the mindscape of the person it's used on. Mindscape? T asked. Think of it like an inner world that represents both your soul and your mind. As for the necklace, it's been told to have the ability to allow its wearer to see into the future. Really? Do you think it can see lotto numbers? Joey perked up. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know what the either scale or the rod do, and if I'm right then the ring housed a spirit much like the puzzle did, only malevolent. And the eye, by all accounts given, allows its user to read minds. So be careful with that one children. Naruto warned them with a serious expression on his face. If that is indeed what it actually does, then nothing is safe. Not strategies, not the cards in your hand, not even your emotions or your memories. He will use them all against you. Whichever one of you faces Pegasus will have the duel of his life on his hands. He looked at Yugi and Joey. You just have to make sure you're ready for it. We will be. We'll have to be. Yugi and Joey shared a look and nodded. Good, keep that spirit. You'll be needing it, sooner rather than later. Naruto turned back to his book, leaving the others to take in the atmosphere of their impending struggles. Um, I have a question. T finally broke the silence a couple of long minutes later. Yes. How do you know what the key and the necklace do? The key is currently with a friend of mine, one you will probably be meeting in the future if things continue the way that they're going. As for the necklace, Naruto closed his book with a sight and put it back into the pouch. I was on my first dig in Egypt with my old mentor when I met, he cut himself off, shaking his head. No, there's no use digging up those memories. Nothing good will come of them. They're ancient past now. He sighed again and put his hands in his pockets with a faraway look in his eyes. What does that mean? Joey asked. It means, none of your business, kid. Got it? Joey gulped, stepping away from the look the older blonde was shooting at him thanks for watching. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.